right, guys, so this morning we are on beautiful Lake Okeechobee out of Royal Martins Marina. We've got a short day ahead of us. Um, I really want to focus on one thing. We're going to go fish the grass flats. We're going to go fish the hay fields, the Everglades, the swamp, whatever you want to talk about. Like, call it that part of Okeechobee. It's, it's freaking cool. A lot of casting, a um, lot of stuff that looks the same, as you'll see. But uh, you can definitely catch some big ones down there. And it can be a lot of fun. And it's really the signature of freaking Lake Okeechobee and the Everglades of fishing South Florida. Big bass, swamp, grass, 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 everywhere. Everything looks good. Bugs are freaking eating me alive right now. We're going to get out there. It's going to be a short day, like I said, so hopefully we can get into them. But I'm going to show you some tips, techniques, and some basically how-to's mental game and how to look at things down there so that you can catch some more fish, take advantage of it, not get intimidated because there's a lot of it, and just have some fun and catch some Florida fish. So let's get it on. Beautiful Lake Okeechobee, high water. We're gonna go get back in the grass and fish the swamp, boys. All right, guys, so here we go. We are fishing this flat right here. Weapon of choice for right now. There's a little bit of dirty water, so we're going with a, a swim jig, heavy cover swim jig. You can see we got the easy turned upside down. It's an easy swimmer. And we're just gonna cast looking for these holes and see what we can do. It's all about that pause, baby. And then they get hung up. Come on out of there, honey cakes. Not a big one, but it'd be a nice way to start. Nice white fish, you know they're coming in. You just pause that little swim jig and freaking, they go crunch, crunch. So what exactly do I got rigged up right here? Well, all I'm doing, let me dig one up. Taking a white, easy swimmer. The water's a little bit tinged and that's why we're going with white. Biting a little off the head and I'm threading it on my HC swim jig and I'm going the opposite way so the tail kicks upwards makes the bait flutter a little better and gives it kind of a wonky wonky touch one of the best guys in the Everglades told me about that I've actually been doing it with other baits too just as trailers but yeah it's all set up just like that and then you just uh, patiently work it through the grass it can be kind of stressful though I think he's still on there. When they get in that hay, man, they are freaking a beast to get in. Still on there. <laughs> the little guy. Look at all that junk. So much junk. So much junk. Come on, honey. Oh, there's a little guy on the swim jig. Let's keep working them, dude. This low light is the time to be doing this. They tend to be a bit more active and you can get them to commit to moving pace. You know, another tip you want to take into mind, you always want to be able to drift with the wind. These fish get so pressured 
that you really want to use the wind as your trolling motor. And when you do use your trolling motor, you want it on a high, you want to shift a little bit, not too far, and get to where you want to be, either drop your power poles or continue drifting. If you use that wind, you can kind of, you can see the grass is bent in a certain direction. Your bait's gonna come through cleaner, you're gonna be a lot more stealthy, and you're just gonna get more bites. If you're buzzing around with the trolling motor, you're just scaring fish every time you tap it, tap it, tap it, even though you're getting into perfect casting position. Better one. We slowed down and we went to um well he's peeing too. It means they're spawning. We went to the new seven inch fat ace. I'm throwing on a real lightweight. There's a sixteenth ounce. Um we're just there's these open holes in these grass patches. Now it's light enough where it stays above the grass but still gets down in the hole a little bit. Let me show you how I'm rigging this. So I got a seven inch gambler fat ace. This is actually a pretty small hook. I think this is a four op. You don't gotta go too big, but it's got that wide gap and there's a 16th ounce lead weight with a peg and i'm just texas rigging it we're old school worm fishing trying to keep the bow out of the line and then that's that's the victim right there I don't know how big this one is. It felt better, but in this stuff, you never know. I think she's still on there, though. Bent my damn reel handle. Oh, that's a solid one, dude. <laughs> How about that, boy? How about that? On the, on the seven inch face, that's like a freaking seven pounder. <laughs> How about that? I thought I just had another dink on. Texas rigging the, the seven inch fat ace on a 16th ounce weight and dragging it like old school worm. That's enough bulk. Oh, that's pretty. Let's let her go real quick and get back in there. See you later, honey bun. See, that's what can surprise you. You get into all these dinks and then you get into a section and you start casting. And dude, we're dragging a worm basically. We're throwing these holes. We started off throwing top water and then uh, and then the magic happened. <laughs> Let's get back in there. This is, uh, this is your Okeechobee flat fishing, man. So you can get in these hay fields, get in these sticks. Start casting and reeling. I call it stupid fishing. It ain't totally stupid, but you gotta kinda put your mind out a little bit and just keep on casting. And when you start getting bites, you gotta settle down. And that's that's really the hardest part to do is kind of recognizing, hey, there's something there's something more to this, even though it looks exactly the same as everything else. <laughs> 